Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to build your clientele as a tattoo artist. I'm gonna give you some tips, tricks, and ancient wisdom, so stay tuned. Building a clientele as a tattoo artist is an uphill battle when you first start. Things that I'm gonna talk about in this video, I used to do all the time and that's how I built my clientele and some of these things I still do today. Just remember overall with all of these things, consistency is key. So if you're not consistent with these things, you are not going to succeed. All right, so tip number one, do free tattoos. You have friends, you have family. If you don't have friends or family, go walk around and talk to people outside that you see have tattoos. Say you, you know, you're a tattoo artist that's new to the area or you're a tattoo artist that's trying to build their clientele and give some people free tattoos. Don't advertise it hugely on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that because then everybody's gonna think that you just do free tattoos. Give that person that you're going to be giving free tattoos to a price to tell people when people ask like, oh, that's cool, how much was that? Tell them not to tell everybody that it was free, but you charge them 300 bucks for it or whatever you wanted to charge for that piece. Then that way, people that are possibly your future clientele have a rough idea of how you price certain things. If you're posting on Facebook or Instagram all the time like, hey, I'm not busy this week, come get tattooed by me, I have a bunch of open time, people are gonna think people are not coming to you for a reason. So you have to look like you have clientele that you're tattooing, so that's why you wanna do free tattoos. So you get some people in, do some work, get some good pictures of them, and advertise them. So this brings me to number two, make it seem like you are busier than you actually are. Obviously, if you don't have a clientele, you are not busy. So if you aren't tattooing, draw. If you don't wanna draw, paint. If you don't wanna paint, do something creative and post it so it makes it seem like you are busy. People don't wanna continuously see, hey, I'm not busy today, come in and get a tattoo. People wanna see you be productive. People wanna see cool creative projects that you're doing, even if it's not tattooing. So there's all different types of things that you can do to make it seem like you're busier than you actually are. And they can be creative, fun things, whatever it is, but put it on social media. If you're posting regularly on social media, people are gonna feel like they know you. They're gonna feel comfortable coming to you saying, hey, I want this tattoo, because you're not this big, scary tattoo artist anymore. You're that guy that posted that cool painting, or they saw you do a time lapse of a cool drawing. Whatever it may be, you want people to think that they know you. You wanna make them feel comfortable. Which brings me to number three, Take advantage of social media. It's free. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all these social media platforms are free to use and you are able to put your content on there for other people to see. When I was building my clientele, I just started out by time-lapsing drawings that I was doing because I wasn't busy and I was sitting at the shop just bored. And I thought, oh, it might be fun to set up my phone and do a time-lapse. And then I started putting music behind them and posting them every day. And all of a sudden, I started booking out. Even though those drawings didn't have anything to do with tattooing, people saw it and they were like, oh, who's this guy? They look on your page, they're like, oh, he's a tattoo artist then they start to follow you. You gain some type of little following and all of a sudden people are messaging you saying like, oh, I love your work. Let me meet up with you to talk to you about this tattoo idea that I have. You don't have to have a fancy camera. You don't have to have like a studio set up at all. You literally have to have a phone, which everybody has, and just an idea. The quality doesn't need to be good. It's probably gonna be grainy anyway because you uploaded it to Facebook and post something every day. And remember, consistency is the key. If people are consistently seeing you produce, they're gonna think, wow, that guy is passionate about what he does. I like what he does. I wanna go to him. Don't think posting once every couple days is going to help you build a clientele because it's not. You have to post every day. You have to post interesting content. You can't post the same content over and over. You wanna keep it fresh and you wanna keep it fun. Ask people's opinion. We all know everybody likes to give their opinion on the internet ask them what they want to see you do next there's all types of angles that you can take with social media and I'm not gonna go that into that right now because that's a whole nother video about social media marketing and if you want to see me talk about social media marketing let me know down in the comments see what I did there I forgot to mention with social media you want to build a brand so posting random things that doesn't look like your brand or what you're trying to convey is not helping you build a clientele if people scroll down your Facebook page and they say tattooing 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 that's good you're building a brand. If people look at your Instagram page and all the pictures have different filters on them and they're not consistent and it doesn't flow well. Like if you go on somebody's Instagram page and you scroll through and you can tell that they're a successful business person, you can tell that that page flows well. They're marketing well. You wanna make sure that you have a strong brand that people can look at and without even knowing who posted it, they can just say, oh, Tyler did that. And they don't even have to look at who posted it. They like it, they know who you are, they know what you do. Good branding. So tip number four 
is to get professional looking business cards and go hand them out. When I first started out, I would walk around and hand out business cards. If social media isn't your thing, you have to talk to somebody. You have to let somebody know that you're offering a service. So getting professional looking business cards is a really big step in doing that. You can go to the mall, you can go to Walmart, you can go to mom and pop shops and leave your cards on the counter. Just go around and talk to people. Get out of your comfort zone and go make some connections. If you live in a big city like New York or Philly, that's so much easier than if you live in a small town. But if you live in a small town, it's still possible. People still want tattoos. People still look for talented artists. And even if you are in a small town, that gives you even more of an advantage than if you're in a big city. Because if you're in a small town, you're gonna stand out even more because you might be the only good tattoo artist in that area. People just need to be able to find out about you. Something I used to do, which it's probably frowned upon, but I used to just go to Walmart or wherever, and I just used to leave a little stack of business cards right by the credit card reader where the clerk couldn't see it. So when people come up to use their credit card, they see my card and take it. Probably not the best idea, but it worked. Tip number five is to be nice to your clients. Acting like a hard ass because you're a tattoo artist is not cool. Yeah, you might have some clients, you might have a giant clientele, but none of those clients are gonna talk good about you to other people. If you do solid work and you're nice and make your clients feel comfortable, then they're gonna be much more likely to talk to their friends, be like, oh, look at this sick tattoo. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, and the guy was really nice to me too. He asked me what kind of music I liked and put it on. Or in my case, I have a TV on my station, so if there isn't a ton of people in the shop, I'll usually ask my client, hey, I have Netflix on the TV. Do you wanna watch something? Your client is gonna be sitting there with you for a while, so you might as well make them comfortable. You might as well make conversation be nice and be professional. You always wanna give your clients a good experience because then that way they're gonna to wanna to come back and they're gonna bring their friends. I know that the title said five tips, but since you stayed for the whole video, I will give you a bonus tip. Make sure that your shop has a good environment. Did you ever walk in somewhere where there's just dreary music or there's no music playing at all and everybody's just like moping around? You automatically feel like you don't wanna be there, it's awkward, whatever. Make sure that there's some type of music playing, have a movie on, greet your clients. And I guess that has to do with tip number five, but basically make a good environment, make a welcoming environment. If people feel good when they walk into your shop, they're gonna wanna keep coming back. So I guess that bonus tip was just basically a piggyback off of number five. Maybe I wouldn't even call it a bonus tip. Either way, I hope that these tips helped you and I hope that you're able to build a clientele. If you have any questions, feel free to message me, comment down below, or send me a carrier pigeon with your message. I will get back to you. Have a good day.